Purchasing an existing research ship and converting it into a world-class expedition vessel can be a great option. The research ship Bold, which was built by the U.S. Navy, is currently for sale, and Dan Stabbert, who has owned and operated three of these vessels, will give us a tour. Today we're back in Lake Union in Seattle at the Stabbert Shipyard, and it is probably the best prospect for a yacht or expedition yacht conversion in the United States today. It's 224 by 43 feet. Hulls are some of the finest science and expedition hulls ever built in the world. The government has just built a new model of this vessel and it's costing $160 million a copy. Ice class, uh, diesel, nice smooth vessel, quiet. Everything is built on resilient mount. They were designed to, for very quiet running, specially designed running gear and propellers. So they could, in the 80s and the 90s, they could listen to uh, for nuclear submarine uh, sound signatures. They didn't spare a dime. Uh, this, everything is built to the utmost uh, strength and redundancy. This vessel holds about, carries about a quarter of a million gallons of fuel. They burn all oh, at 10 knots, about 1,600 a day. You can go around the world. These vessels are ideal for an expedition yacht uh, conversion. And they're ice class, so you can go to the Arctic, you know, go up and around the Arctic and make some of these around the, all the way around the pole uh, transits. These vessels would be ideal for something like that. But this would be a great area for a sky lounge here um, as well. Or this just could be an outside seating deck area and then still have the large stern area. As we're standing now, the pilot house deck is, you can see, elevated there ahead of the stack. From the main deck, we're, we're on the third deck above the main deck and that's the fourth deck above the main deck. So lots of height, a lot great visibility, great foredeck. You could put launches on the foredeck if you wanted to. This hydraulically driven anchor gear, all, all sub decks. So all the anchor winches and the, and the hydraulic drives and all that are below the deck. Big pilot house area though. On the ocean stall with the sister ship to this, we just put a full DP station up here and moved it forward. And, and, and it turned out very nice. And then we have large settees either side. So this, this, this space is large enough to have a wonderful pilot house area and then a great lounge bar settee area here for owners. Then a bimini out over the stern. So you have almost 700 square feet just in this area alone. Great space for the guests and the crew to work together, sail the ship and to enjoy the voyage. So you have about 2,200 square feet on this deck alone. Great overhead height, a, a wonderful owner's uh, uh, stateroom. Fire rated stairways and stairwells going up and down throughout. I and mean, look at the overhead you have for ventilation and ducting. I mean, look at my space. You have almost 28 to 30 inches just for sheet metal ducting and overhead services and supplies for, these are all ingredients for a successful conversion with, that, that, is re, that can be done at a, at a reasonable price point. These are all jointed bulkheads, so you can just strip these out of here and open this space up. This vessel is built with very few structural bulkheads. But anyway, large spaces with minimal structural interference. You can come in here and put an interior package in that's pre-constructed out, out of updated panels and your surfaces on them and do it in a way that, is, that can go in very quickly. This is an access hatch so that goes right through the engine. You can pull your main engines out of here if you needed to. Awful nice. And they're not buried inside the ship. Not that you'd ever have to. There's four generators, four propulsion generators, and she runs on two and keeps two in reserve all the time. And if you ever had to pull a full package out, you could do it right through this hatch. These are lar obviously large lab areas. You can use this space uh, for a large upper sky lounge, you know, or you could cut it off and remove it and replace it, and make it all glass all the way around here. Be interested to see what uh, the designer comes up with. You can bring in a joiner company and you can put a joiner package in this thing quickly. Look at this space. Look at this deck. This deck is, is a, almost 100 feet long by itself. And this is an upper deck. This isn't even a, the main deck. Let's see if we were in a, in, the, in, the, in a big sky lounge here and then you have a set of double doors and then you'd have your guest staterooms off to either side with small balconies. And once again, joiner bulkheads, right? Now this is steel on this side. So these are steel. This is steel on the starboard side and then joiner on the port. So you could take this and open this all the way up that direction. We're up in the four deck area. This is the second deck, 300 kW emergency generator over on the side, Caterpillar. And then forward here is all storage locker. Bosa locker, lines, support, and there's a, a, a dumbwaiter, an elevator type shaft. It's really, it's, it's mechanical, but goes all the way down deep for carrying lots of lines and gear. 
these ships are made to go offshore for a year at a time. And look at the width of the hulls. I mean, these passageways, you know, almost two meters wide. You can see some beautiful cherry or the beautiful hardwoods just flowing down through here. Oh my gosh, it's a marble inlay. This would be a blast to convert. A uh, big walk-in freezers and reefers. Easily, easily could kick dick stores for months at a time. As a hospital, you wouldn't want to change this. There's no reason to. I would keep a hospital on a ship for this size. This would be a great crew lounge. It's right, it's forward of the galley. And then a, a great, great commercial galley already. And then another dining area, you know. So once again, this could all be for crew. Crew lounge, crew galley area. Machine shop. It's really nice if you're going to have skiffs and launches and ROVs and AUVs and submarines. Having this right adjacent to the back deck is awful nice with a lathe and all its components. But she's got the four 398s and like I said, you know, you can run anywhere from two, three, or four depending on your speed. They live a long time. They're great engines. They're very inexpensive to rebuild. You can rebuild these engines for $60,000, $75,000 a piece. They have a long life, and of course, you know, we're talking having to rebuild every maybe five or ten years on something, a vessel of this nature. So we're not talking much money. Repair and maintenance costs for the main engine and propulsion would be very limited. Once again, redundancy and everything from air compressors to centrifuges for your oil, and everything's pretty much state of the art, I would say, in general. This is the control space. Um, same thing, there's propulsion control. One person can run everything from here without a question. And then what you'd have an assistant engineer as well, of course. This, this vessel would be ideal for, you know, that, a, that submarine ROV AUV expedition for going halfway around the world. This boat generally runs a 9 to 11 man crew, depending on how, how, how hard you're going to work and where you're going. These are the two drive motors, they're 800 horsepower <coughs> each. General Electric, they turn a maximum of 180 RPM and no gearbox, no reduction, so they're very slow turning. And most of the turn time, you'll be cruising at 150, 160 RPM. You won't be pushing them too hard. Well, these are your freshwater pressure tanks, you know, for your just your portable water systems, fuel transfer, some ballast transfer lines. No, 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 no gearbox, no reduction gear, no nothing. It's a straight drive. The only thing you have is a thrust bearing there and a shaft brake. Very smooth. You sit down here and they're just, they're just humming like this. It's great for when you have ROVs, AUVs, toys in the water that you're doing sub, you know, you're using some subsea equipment. You can maneuver around them with a the large bow thruster and these two propulsion motors. You can maneuver around them very nicely. And if you want to add dynamic positioning onto this ship, the yeah, ship is ideal for adding dynamic position because it's already diesel electric so it's a matter of interfacing the DP system with the electric con motor controls which works very well. We've done one it worked out beautifully but I think it's a 600 horsepower stern thruster in the keel. We already had a 500 horsepower in the bow and you, that blended with these two propulsion motors gave the vessel phenomenal maneuverability. Very in inexpensive DP upgrade. It was, it was very reasonably priced. And this boat is just, you know, this boat has just come out of dry dock, has a brand new five year on her hull and machinery. The rudders were pulled and the shafts were pulled and inspected and all of that, but she's ready to go around the world. It's a phenomenal foundation. This hull, with a minor conversion, could be one of the finest expedition yachts in the world. From a quality, capability, the, 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 uh, and a holistic blend. Ice glass construction, it's heavy steel construction along with its volume. Wonderful ship to travel, take a family on, take a group on, an adventure, and you can spend a lifetime on the ocean on a ship like this.